Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain wait, order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law MG I C 30A. It's a run on sentence. Meetings are typically broadcast on Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT, remote meeting connection noted below. So the meeting ID is 911-604-1580, and the passcode is 570012. Dial in 1312-626-6799 or 1929-205-6099. Thank you. You're welcome. So, um, and um, a reminder of our meeting guidelines for the planning board that we are going to, we try to speak one at a time, recognized by the chair, and in accordance with the Deerfield Code of Conduct, all speakers are respectful, considerate, courteous, and we also try to be concise and um, repetitive. Um, and I also will apologize in advance. I'm um, in a different time zone and on a different computer. So if it takes me a while to pull, pull documents up or whatnot, please forgive. Um, Excuse me, Annalie, are we also limiting um, comment to two minutes when we do have public comment? Oh yeah, that was just in reference to our planning board discussions. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, thanks. thanks. Thanks, Denise. Um, so um, board members in attendance, um, Let's see, I'll, I'll just go forward with what I see in order here. Um, Andrea Leibson, present, I, I see. Her. Andrea Leibson, present. And then I see Denise Mason. Denise Mason, present. Kathy Sylvester. You're muted, Kathy. Um, Kathy Sylvester, present. And Mary Cloutier. Yeah, Mary Cloutier, present. And uh, Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba present. Thank you. And um, Rachel has informed me that she will be joining us at around eight o'clock tonight. She had a, uh, a commitment that she couldn't change. Um, reviewing minutes, um, Anne Mary. So I just wanted to do a brief um, uh, overview of the process. So um, the minutes that were shared with you um, accord, um, in accordance with open meeting law, you've been made commenters so that if there's something that I need to fix, you can make a comment on that. If anybody doesn't know how to do that, I'm happy to share my screen and show you where the comment button is. That way you can give those comments to me and then I can do a new draft and then we can vote to approve that draft. Um, so I don't know if there were any, but I know that there were requests to edit, which I think is, I'm sure is a no-no uh, for open meeting law for us all to be editing the same document. So um, I had a question about these minutes that hasn't been answered yet. So I'm not gonna submit them um, to be um, approved because I still have an outstanding question for um, the rest of you. Um, and if you go to your uh, draft of the minutes, you'll see that I um, could not find the part where the public hearing was closed at the end of the treehouse presentation. So I'm not sure that that happened. And um, I was having technical difficulties. I went back to the recording, but since I wasn't there, I'm relying on my other board members for that. I don't so know. Are you asking us to comment on that now or? Do you know if you closed the public hearing at the end of the treehouse presentation? Because it did not seem like you did. So I'm not sure where that put, puts us, but as the clerk, that was my observation. <clears throat> well, and you, and you listened again to the um, recording? I did. Oh, okay. So perhaps that was an oversight then if you listened again and didn't hear. Um, right, not to say that I'm infallible or whatever. Um, and so I welcome other people to, um, you know, dispute that, but I don't know where that puts that in terms of us in our meeting and what we need to do now. And um, 
But as far as I can tell, we did not close that public meeting. So perhaps if we just vote now to make sure the public meeting is closed, the public hearing is closed. I mean, we voted obviously on the site plan review request, but closing the public meeting, and then we can vote to um, approve the minutes. I mean, that would be okay with me. Maybe people with more experience or who have, maybe somebody else has input to this, but I, my understanding is that's what we should do. Okay. So it's out. I mean, that sounds like a, uh, a, hopefully a small technical detail. So could I have a motion to close the public hearing for the treehouse site plan review phase two? I make a motion to close the public hearing for treehouse site plan review. Thank you. And a second? Denise Mason, I'll second that. And uh, is there any discussion? Just a comment. I mean, it was a very difficult evening because we had a hard time. <laughs> the hybrid was not working out well and we right. had to change and we had to be right. So it was, it yep. was, yeah. Yeah, complicated. And so as I recall, there was not a lot of public participation. I'm mm -hmm. trying to recall who was on. I think Mr. Upton may have been on the meeting. He was about solar. Oh, okay, okay. Or I don't know, I see, I see that Mr. Upton's here. I'm sorry, I actually thought I was muted. Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. no, I mean, I, I don't recall who else was on that or any public comment. Jennifer? <clears throat> I'm, I'm certain that this is gonna cause some sort of issue because the site plan review was filed, you know, already with the clerk and that has dates. And I don't know if you have to re-sign it. If, Could we also just make the assumption that it and, was closed? And it was, I mean, do you even have? We, we certainly were proceeding according to protocol that the meeting had been closed. So yeah. Can we just? make the assumption that it was closed. We would not have gone forward to vote on the site plan review if we hadn't closed the public hearing. Right. So that's in, inherent in that. So I would, I would then say that if we want to rescind the motion or if, I don't know how the rest of the planning think, board feels, but. I don't know, you could take a vote and then I, I can check. I just don't want it to be a fatal flaw. Right. I, I would wait for counsel on this. Okay, so let's just leave, let's just leave the minutes. Um, because um, you've already taken the vote. The, the plan, site plan review has already been filed, like um, Jennifer was saying. So my, um, I, would, I would see if you might have to revote the whole process, but maybe not. So why don't you we wait and see what council has to say on that okay jennifer, Carol. jennifer would you um make a note of that um to forward to council please yes and then um as far as the motion and second on the floor we're then we're having discussion so all in favor of the motion to reclose the public hearing should i just rescind the motion oh can we do yes why don't you do that, Kathy? I will. I've done okay. it. Okay, good. All right. Whoa, well, we're just moving right along here. <laughs> and in fact, we will be sort of bouncing around a bit on our um, agenda because the entire select board is. Uh oh. Anna Lee froze. All right, Vice Chair. <laughs> no, you're back. You're back, Annalie. You're just muted. Oh, there you go. Yeah, unmute. Okay. So okay. we're skipping around a bit in the agenda. Um, all, yes, all of a sudden things changed here. Um, uh, but we'll be looking right now at our solar bylaws with a review of the um, changes that we had discussed at our last meeting and also um, somewhat of a review of how we would 
potentially be presenting them to the um, to the warrant and to the town meeting. So, Chris, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, I guess uh, there are two primary issues and some smaller items to discuss on the solar bylaw. We had a pretty good discussion at the last meeting about um, a number of issues, and I think came to some good closure about them. The one remaining issue that we agreed that we talk about again this time was the definition of the small scale ground mounted solar systems. So that's uh, the first thing I want to talk about. And then the second is um, we got some comments from uh, the town clerk kind of um, late and I attempted to review and address those um, in the short amount of time that we had before the meeting. And so there's some things to talk about there as well that are in the um, category of kind of primary issues. So maybe taking the uh, small scale ground mounted uh, definition first. Last time we talked about um, wanting to change that number, uh, which was uh, at that time we were discussing a, a, a square footage of 2100 square feet of surface area and revising that smaller uh, based on doing some research about the average size of uh, residential systems. And so I, I did that um, research and um, I think the most significant finding that, that came out of that was that um, residential systems or single phase systems are capped in Massachusetts by the Massachusetts net metering regulations at 10 kilowatts. Um, so if, if you want to build a residential system larger than that, you can, but it requires um, approval from the DPU and you have to go through a process um, to do that. So it seemed logical in our discussions to uh, think about capping that um, small scale residential at that same size. And so what does 10 kilowatts translate to in terms of square footage? Because that's what we're using as a square footage approach here. It translates to 660 square feet. Um, so a typical residential system today can be built out up to 660 square feet without getting um, DPU approval. And so again, correlating that to our bylaw seemed like it was logical and, and sensible, and that's the, the proposed change to the definition. Now I wanna note um, again, as I did in my email to the planning board that if someone wanted to build a larger residential system than that, it's still possible. Um, under both the DPU regulations and under this proposed bylaw, the process would be that you would have to go um, go forward as if you were a medium scale um, residential system for ground mounted, and uh, that would require site plan review, no special permit, but site plan review. And that seemed, again, to us like it made sense um, for a slightly larger system to have the planning board's involvement in, in taking a look at a, at a site plan. Um, so I think maybe I'll stop on, on that issue there and see if there's discussion about that. Well, I think what we're, and I, I should have um, began Chris by sort of talking about what our process might be. Um, what I was thinking of for the, the process is that you would make a presentation about the, um, I mean, we could, well, presentation, then then there would be planning board questions. And at the end of that time, then there could be public comment, um, one comment per person, two minute maximum. Um, and at the end of the public comment time, then the planning board would have discussion on the final um, vote of the final amendment. So we could, as a planning board, discuss each of those sections first. Is, how does the planning board feel about that now? And then after after Chris and the planning board have gone through all of the uh, proposed changes, then we'll have public comment. That sound good? Okay. So the um, the reality is is in 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 relation to the prior 
um, version, we have significantly decreased the size of our small scale, right, Chris? It's Correct. gone gone down almost by half, almost, right? Well, we started um, with the original bylaw that was adopted at June Town Meeting. Um, that was uh, 10,000 square feet. So we've gone down from that number to the 660. Oh, so, right, because small scale wasn't um, really addressed right. in that bylaw, correct. Extremely okay. decrease um, based on public comment. Okay, it certainly seems to make sense, the rationale that you went through with bringing it down to the, the 10 kilowatt conversion. So I guess if we don't have any more comments from the planning board, should Chris, oh yes, and Mary? It seems like a significant change. It doesn't seem insignificant to me. I don't know. That's just my opinion to go from 10,000 to 660 doesn't seem like a minor change. This from our nice. last, um, Chris, from our last edit, what was the change though? It was- It was uh, 2,100 feet. 2,100 to six, right. which is still quite a change. Right. Um, right. Kathy, yes. Excuse me, Anne-Mary, you want to finish? Okay, uh, Kathy? So I, I agree with Anne-Mary, it's quite a change. So I did bring this up with Chris because, you know, with climate change, uh, electric cars wanting to have homes heated by electric and not gas or oil, I see people's residential needs going up. And, um, our solar system here is almost 10 at my house and it doesn't provide enough for heat. So I'm thinking, what is the likely need in the future? And I and I also not sure that I agree with square footage being the the correct measurement, because right now, if the state says 10 kilowatts, why don't we just say that? Because as solar panels get more efficient, they get smaller. Um, so square footage really doesn't address the size of the system in terms of its output. Does that make sense? You know, so I don't know, I don't know how you get around the DPU and the Massachusetts um, requirements and limitations, but I think that people are going to need more or not less in the future. I think in terms of the kilowatt hours versus the square footage, that Chris, correct me if I'm wrong, but that's in an effort to make the bylaws a little bit more user friendly so that people could really understand what these different size limits were for small, medium, and large. Denise? Yeah, the what? original bylaw. Not, just, no, no, no. Okay, just sorry, just, Chris. Um, the original bylaw was set up uh, with the definitions using kilowatt hours as, as the defining characteristic. And the planning board decided to change that to square footage because they felt like it was too difficult to enforce. Um, so that's that was a decision that the board made previously. Denise, yeah, my comment was, I mean, was the issue with just the ground the ground mounted solar, or was it? Uh, you know, I can't. I I don't have that open right now. Is that inclusive of the roof mounted? This is just the definition for ground mounted, ground mounted, small scale solar roof mounted um, of any size um, would still be an as of right use. Right. Got it. So that's an important factor in thinking about, for example, Kathy's comment. Um, you know, we're not saying that roof mounted systems would be capped. Um, we're just saying that the ground mounted systems would have that cap. So you could potentially have a combination of roof and ground mounted if you're, you know, residential um, as well. Hmm. And did, did, Chris, didn't you say that the original, the, the 2100, I mean, wasn't that, I thought that we did that because that's what, I don't recall who's, who else was doing that in the state, but I thought that was sort of a standard Yes, the original 2100 number came from a study um, and, a, and a document prepared by the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission 
which was created in cooperation with seven or eight um, city and town planners in the valley. And they came up with that number um, after some extensive research. And that was my original recommendation to you. Mm -hmm. um, there was public comment that that number was still too high. So, um, you know, we came back down um, based on the, the information that I just gave you. Well, if, if I recall public comment, I think there was possibly one individual who was making that comment. So my recommendation would be to go back to the 2100. Andrea? Yeah. So the, uh, it seemed to me that the 2100 was uh, a concern for ground mounted because of the visual impact it would have, especially on neighbors. Um, if you could, if you could have an unlimited amount on your um, roof, or whatever your roof could uh, hold, whatever the capacity for your roof would be, and then to um, limit the ground mounted so as not to impact your neighbors too much that is um that seems to me to be a sensible thing i don't know about the exact number kathy sylvester mute it, you know i think that some people can't put it on the roof depending on the shade of their lawn so I just don't want to be too limiting on something that's so critically important for climate change. I think that while 10,000 is a pretty big system to have in your backyard, I don't think 2100 is, I, I know what I have on my roof and how big that is. And it's not, that, that's not that big for a ground mounted system, which would be close to 10 kilowatts. So. I just feel we really got to be careful how much we are limiting on such a critical, important issue. Uh, and Mary, thank you, Kathy. Um, yeah, and you know, to the point, <clears throat> you know, about what your neighbors, uh, you know, the impact on your neighbors, it's almost arbitrary, really, um, because your neighbors can have lots of things that you object to on their property and this is sort of regulating one of those things that may be a problem in certain circumstances. But um, it seems like this is what the town voted on. And it seems like, um, you know, it would be telling people what to do on their property. And I'm not sure that everybody, I, I don't agree with that in all circumstances. I'm not sure I agree with that in any circumstances. So yeah, I guess that's my problem with it. We already voted on it. Well, I mean, we certainly, there was a strong request from the town with our, when we went through town meeting last time that we, we really had not addressed small scale and that we needed to address small scale sale, uh, solar. Um, we had done our work with medium and large, but we needed to do small scale. And so certainly what's the definition of small scale? <laughs> I mean, that just then would make medium scale either 600 or 2100 to, what is it? So, uh, and uh, people could build uh, larger ground mounted. They would just have to go through site plan review. Is, am I correct in that? Yes, that's, that's exactly right. So that so, so Kathy, that might mean that people and and Mary people would still be able to create such systems. They just would have to do site plan reviews first. But what we talked about at the last meeting is that's not a small thing. I mean that can involve lawyers, and I just think it sounds like it's pretty heavy lift for a resident. Mm -hmm. And okay. we went from ten thousand down to twenty one hundred. I thought that was a huge reduction. I'm not sure we need to keep going down. That's that's my point of view anyway. <laughs> I guess I'll leave it at that. Well, maybe um, Chris, why don't we kind of leave that as a question right now for um, still to be decided and you wanna move forward with some of the other major changes um, to the bylaws. Does that make sense for the planning board? Okay, Chris. Okay. 
Um, so the other um, significant issue is, um, again, we received some comments uh, from the town clerk. Um, some of them were pretty minor in nature. Um, the one that was pretty significant was that um, there was a bylaw numbering problem. And it was difficult to understand um, initially why there was a bylaw numbering problem. But I now have come to understand that um, the version of the bylaw that was adopted at June town meeting was adopted um, not as an entire replacement of section 3800, but as an amendment to section 3800. Um, and it was intended as a replacement. Um, so somewhere along the line, there was a miscommunication about that. Um, but we have that issue to deal with. So what um, the town administrator has determined is that it makes sense to adopt the bylaw that's under currently currently under consideration as a complete replacement for section 3800, which would resolve um, the remaining numbering problems, which seem fairly insignificant, but they are you know, important from the standpoint of making sure it fits into the overall context of the bylaw. So that's, um, that's a change from what we thought we were doing. Um, the other comments that came in from uh, the town clerk had to do with getting clarifications on some fairly modest sections. Um, the definition of as of right citing, um, she was asking for some clarifications, for example, um, that as of right citing, it doesn't require uh, a special permit or um, a site plan approval, but it does require a building permit. That seemed fairly obvious and self-evident, but I, I put that language into the bylaw to address the comment that came from the, the, the town clerk. Um, also um, in that section, I put in a clarification that medium and large scale roof mounted systems are subject to some of the performance standards noted in the bylaw. Again, that seemed fairly self-evident, but it seemed important also to clarify that in the definition. Um, so there are sections, um, specifically 3870 through 3890, where there's some performance standards that have to be met. Um, and even for those systems that are roof mounted, um, that are as of right, they still have to meet those performance standards. Uh, the town clerk also requested a definition of municipal solar energy system. So that's defined now as a the system that's owned by the municipality. And then there were a couple of other very modest places where we inserted um, the word ground mounted just to make sure that we were absolutely clear about what type of system we were talking about. And those were shown in the version of the bylaw that I forwarded to the planning board um, earlier in the week. Um, so I think that is a synopsis of the uh, addressing the comments from the town clerk. So planning board, do you have any um, <clears throat> comments or questions in relation to what Chris presented as a summary or your own review of the bylaws that were sent to us as of, I think, uh, August 8, 19? <clears throat> And as, as Chris mentioned, it's no small matter that we are looking to totally replace the bylaws that the town meeting voted on in June. Um, but that said, it was um, voted with a fairly strong endorsement of the medium and large and, and primarily a request that we do something for small. And so that's what we're doing now. All right, then maybe, um, so what we can do now is go to public comment um, with one per person and trying to keep it at two minutes max and um, planning board will listen to all the comments and then 
uh, when all the comments are done, we'll have our discussion as to the final um, version that we'd like to maybe set, send forward to public hearing. So public comment and Jen, maybe you can help me. Um, I think I'm able to see most of the hands up, but if I'm not, if you could help me with that. Yeah. So <clears throat> public comments. Don't see any hands. Um, I think Jeff is trying to speak. I can unmute him. Hi Jeff, I unmuted you. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, I couldn't raise my hand for some reason here on the computer, but uh, just very quickly on the on the small scale, uh, I like the idea of the combination of the roof mount in the ground mount with the ground mount being maxed at 660 square feet. I think that's more than generous. Uh, you get to 2,100 square feet on a ground mount, and that still gives you a 10 foot high by 200 foot long, or any combination thereof on property. And uh, I'm sorry, but that that can cause uh, obstruction of view and so on and so forth with neighbors. Uh, and comment was made about uh, well, neighbors can do what they want with their property and that, but. I find it interesting, though, that in the bylaws, you're still requiring certain properties to do certain things with their trees. So I guess you can't have it both ways. But I think with the roof mount combination, and if somebody wanted to do uh, the ground mount of the 660, I think that combination would work. That would be a lot more acceptable than the 21 100 square feet on the ground mount. Uh, now, Chris, you had mentioned quick question here as far as small and going into medium, people could request more uh, than the small mount uh, allows. My question would be if people do that and it requires a site uh, plan review, uh, would it also require them? to uh, do something for financially for decommissioning, seeing how they're oversized uh, compared to a small ground mount. So those are, those are my concerns. Uh, I don't like the idea of the 2,100 square feet ground mount, especially when you have a state uh, throwing out the uh, 10 number for a standard. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. <clears throat> um, do we have any <clears throat> other public comments, Tim? Um, <clears throat> yes, I, I do think the, the changes that have been proposed mm -hmm. seem to address the questions that were most concerned to uh, members at the annual town meeting. Um, a 660 square foot ground mount would be 20 by 33 feet to give somebody an idea of what that would size, you know, would, would seem to be. Um, and since um, there's a 10K system size limit before a, a 2000 or 2100 square foot ground mount system might be appropriate on a, on a piece of land where somebody had 12 or 13 acres, and they weren't going to show um, this footprint to their neighbor. But that could be addressed, even if you keep the six, 660 square foot ground mount size limit by going through the special permit process or the, the site plan review process. So I think that people who need a larger system are protected if it needs to be ground mount, whereas um, some consideration for neighbors who live close together, um, limiting the, the actual physical size of the structure seems to be a reasonable compromise. And the other thing I would like to mention, since I made my living as an editor for 35 years, go through this bylaw and hyphenate all the ground mounteds and roof mounteds, or don't hyphenate them, but pick one and stick with it. <laughs> 
I think also capitalization, right, Tim? Capitalization, yeah. I think it's a hybrid right now. So just pick a style and stick with it. <laughs> we're, we're, hybrid has become the name of the game these days. Thanks, Tim. Um, let's see. Um, Other no, ah, Jen? yeah, Jennifer. I, I was just wondering if you could do and or. If so, if you use the kilowatts or the square and the square footage. Okay, thank you, Jen. We can talk yeah. about that in our discussion. Mm -hmm. um, do we see any other comments here <clears throat> from the public? Doesn't appear to be. Okay, so um, then let's um, stop the public comment period time and the planning board can have a, a discussion. It seems that the two sort of thoughts that came up other than the editing comments was still the question of the 660 versus 2100 and then the suggestion of and or for um, size or kilowatt hours. <clears throat> um, and or Chris, I mean, what are your thoughts with that? Um, my initial thought is that it might cause some confusion, but you could potentially do it. I think you would have to say, um, for example, 660 square feet or 10 kilowatt kilowatts, whichever is greater or whichever is lesser, you know, depending on what you choose. Right, it's not an and because and would mean it would be. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't know how to say that. Yeah, right, right, right. right. No, it's good to you think know. about. Hmm. Because of um, my thought was, you know, what Kathy was saying, just like cell phones or televisions or whatever, they get smaller and thinner and <laughs> and they change over time. So. Um, my thought is as if it was the kilowatt and it was smaller, would it, I don't know, cover more? <laughs> um, I don't know, yeah, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm just right, actually, no, if, if, if technology changes and the cell panels become smaller, then in fact, the 660 would be um, a larger kilowatt, kilowattage, right. <laughs> that's the term, right? right. It, it, additionally, if the state changes its uh, its cap based on need or public uh, demands, then um, that that could limit us if we if we included that. Well, they would just get a medium and go for a site plan review. I know it would be more of a process until we could change the bylaw in the future. But um, hmm. just a thought. For me, it was helpful to sort of project out that 660 square feet is 20 by 30. That's fairly good size, it seems. As I recall, thinking back, 2100 before was more like um, half, of, half of a football field. <clears throat> hmm. Well, Maybe then, I guess when we have, um, okay, so we got two things going on here. We've got the, the question of 10 kilowatt, is it 10 kilowatt, how would that be Chris, 10 kilowatt hours or 660, whichever is greater? Yes. Okay. So does that sound reasonable to the um, planning board? And Mary, no? Not <laughs> just shaking her head. Uh, Lily. Well, we're kind of. I know you're in your thing. Um, I came late, and I'm sorry. But I just have a quick question, maybe. Um, do if the concern is for aesthetics, um, why? And we know that technology makes things smaller. Why would we limit the kilowatt? hours because I will tell you the power company limits your kilowatt production anyway 
I mean, they're not going to let me build a power plant on my roof. They limited how much I could put on my roof. Anyway, so my, my question is, if this is just about visual impact, then why do we care how much people generate when the power company will limit us anyway? Sorry. Right, well, we're saying 10 kilowatt hours or 660 feet, whichever is greater. So, I don't know if that answers your question, <clears throat> Denise, and then, then. Okay, I, th I think Lily has a really <laughs> good point. I think, I think the objection is the visual. So if we do 660, they can do a combination. The problem is, is that with, with some, some places, I think probably my house, we've got so much shade. I don't think we could do it anyway. I mean, we're gonna check into it, but you know, if you could do a combination roof mount and the 660, that's fine, but I agree. It's probably not good to um, state the 10 kilowatt because as we know, technology changes and, and they probably will get smaller. So I agree with that. I would. <clears throat> okay, um, we had talked about Tim, we'll, we'll give you a pass, I guess. <laughs> um, okay, well, I just wanted to say that uh, in references to this, it would be a 10 kilowatt system. And because that's the size of the ge energy generating capacity and 10 kilowatt hours is a measure of how much power. So that's just a, another editing thing. All right, so maybe, <clears throat> Maybe if we were to entertain a motion to approve for, well, let me just say as an aside, my understanding of the process is that before it goes to public hearing, this in fact needs to be reviewed again by town council. So um, there's a little bit of a side road there, but hopefully <clears throat> any changes from town council would be very, um, minor and not require us to review this again. <clears throat> that said, um, and, and, our next Annalee? step. Yes, uh, who's that? This is Dave Wolfram. Oh, yes. I'm sorry, uh, I just got on. But um, my feelings on this is we might be better off with the town bylaw just saying the square footage and leaving the KWs out of it because, you know, as it's been mentioned, the technology is going to be changing quite a bit. And so, you know, if, and I think a lot of it's for aesthetics that people are concerned about. So limiting to the 640 would, might be a better idea than trying to say how many KW output. And as it also was stated, you know, the electric company is going to put limits on what you can have anyways, but for output. Thank you, David. Yes, Andrew? Uh, it seems to me it's not the planning board. The planning board doesn't want to um, have people limit the amount of power they can generate. We are really concerned about the way it impacts other people in the community, what the aesthetics are, what the, um, the physical display is. And so I don't think we should include the, um, the power generation for that reason. <laughs> Well, how about if we um, entertain a motion to um, accept the, it's basically what it would be is accept the bylaw as proposed uh, in the August 19th iteration. And then we have, you know, discussion and voting on that. And, and if there's still this question between the 660 and 2100, that's, I guess it will be become evident. Um, so, can we have a motion to um, accept the bylaws as drafted uh, in the August 19th, 2021 version? Uh, I so move, if that is acceptable. Thank you, Andrea. <clears throat> we have a second. I'll second that, Denise Mason. Thank you, Denise. Um, and is there further discussion? Oh, Chris, oh, Chris, <laughs> I guess, Chris. Um, I just would add that um, I'd like to include a note at the top of the bylaw that indicates that this bylaw is 
intended as a replacement in its entirety um, for section 3800 so that there um, again is no confusion about that um, going forward. Yes, I believe that there um, that Casey had mentioned, and I can't pull it up right now, but Casey had mentioned some specific <clears throat> language in relation to that, but that's the essence of what the language was if the planning board is comfortable with that. Or if not, I can try to pull it up real quick here. Let's see, what did she say? Just a second, excuse me. Well, <clears throat> so um, excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, so to see if the town would vote to amend Deerfield zoning bylaws, chapter 179, section 3,800 solar energy systems by replacing 3,800 as follows. And then that's where our bylaws would go or take and take any action relative there too. That's the terminology that would happen. And, and Mary, I can send that to you for the minutes. That'd be great, thank you. Um, yes, Denise? Just, just one other comment. Would it make sense to, to make mention that the 660, that it could be a combination of, of the ground mounted and the roof mounted so people don't, don't think that it's limiting? I mean, it's limiting the ground mounted, but it's not limiting the whole system. Right, that, so it wouldn't actually be a combination. It would be 660 for the ground mounted only, right, Chris? Yeah, you, would, you wouldn't want to do that because what we're talking about is the definition for small scale ground mounted system. Okay. Oh, good, right, right, okay. right. Okay, okay, good, thank you. Thanks. Because like right on my, my garage right now, I have 880 square feet on my garage. All right, so um, if we could have a motion to approve the um, the bylaws substance of um, August 19th and with that um, introduction that it would be replacing section 3800. Did we have a motion? <laughs> this is why we can use with the motions, Anne Mary. Andrew, is that what you moved? That sounds like what she oh. moved. Oh, yeah, that's I, right. I, and then we're having the discussion. And so now right. we have voting. Okay. But so I'm, I'm still going... concerned. I'm still concerned about the fact that we don't have a specific number that 660 um, or 2100 or some other number hasn't been determined. 660 is in the August 19th. Um, yeah. It but it seems to me there may still have been some contention about that. Well, is there other discussion with planning well, board members? Kathy? I think it should be larger than that, but that's that's my feeling. I don't think that's a surprise. So whether it's 2100 or 1500, I, I just think it's too limiting at 660 personally. So. And Mary, thank you, uh, Kathy. I agree with Kathy. I think it's too limiting. Um, and I, I think it's uh, uh, too far afield from the town vote. I think it's a sub, uh, sub, uh, significant change. So potentially if we are voting to approve according to the motion, then it would approve the 660. If we vote nay, um, it would then, we could have a different motion for a different number. All right, um, so I'm gonna um, just go according to what I see on my screen. So um, Denise Mason. We're voting for the 660? Yes, uh, yes, the 660. Oh boy, I, st I, st I still have a little bit of a problem. You know, 
So discussion afterwards or just voting now? Well, I, uh, unless we need more discussion, do we want to have some more discussion? We do have, I mean, we have the motion. It was seconded at the 660. Yeah. We've had some discussion. Right. And um, so it seems that maybe the discussion among planning board members has sort of okay. been said. You know what? Okay. I do, I do get the visual and I probably would have an issue with my neighbor doing that. Okay. But if they could do 660 and roof mounted, that would be fine. So I'll vote yes for the 660. Thank you, Denise. <clears throat> Andrea? Um, I, I am voting. Um, no, I think maybe we need to have it be bigger. Okay. Um, uh, next person I see is, is Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, no. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, no. Um, Kathy Wichroba. I think that we need to have it bigger, um, especially depending on the size of the property and where it's located. So I'm going to say no. And is that all? One, two, three, four, five, and then myself. Um, I'll I'll vote no also. So the the motion fails. Um, would the proposal then be? I mean, I think there is validity in trying to have a an established number, not just something we pull from the air. And the 2100 was, as Chris mentioned, uh, sort of a best practices number from, was it Pioneer Valley plant, planning, regional planning board commission, right? Carolyn. Uh, you're muted, Carolyn. Yeah, sorry. Um, I was just thinking, it sounds like uh, rather than rush this, if people, we, we our tourist overlay um, district needs more work with Lisa Mead and she actually um, you know is dropping off her daughter at college and she won't be available till next week um, so uh, I was wondering maybe um, you all could think about this and and bring it forward maybe next week on September 1st because Dave is available and I haven't usually on Wednesdays I don't know if Trevor has another meeting that night Oh, are you available, Trevor? Well, it, it, maybe we could meet again, um, you know, next Wednesday, and you will have more chance to think about this, and and we can finish up our tourist overlay district and still meet the um, October, you know, our October special town meeting um, deadlines, because it sounds like, uh, you know what you're discussing is really important and all the issues that you're bringing up are important <laughs> so it you have to have some kind of compromise um to move forward and and so it seems like there should be some more discussion that's all and and we would love to meet with you again anyway so which is kind of two issues um Thank you, Carolyn. Um, I mean, I guess I, I, I'm always one to sort of, you know, we try for some consensus and understanding. I'm not sure that we have any number other than 2100 um, that we would come up with. Um, what does the planning board think about that suggestion? I guess we're still in a planning board conversation mode. Kathy? Um, I'm not sure sure what we would do between now and next Wednesday because we have to have the meeting in public so we couldn't exactly just talk about it I, you know what I'm saying if we closed tonight's meeting so, well this right now though I mean it's a um, <laughs> it becomes a little bit challenging to to realize but this is just our public board our public our planning board conversation about what can we move forward to a public meeting and the public meeting needs to be posted two weeks in advance. Public really, hearing. 
a public hearing, I'm sorry, yes, the public hearing. So um, we would need to have an additional, and it could still just be additional planning board conversation about what do we want to move forward to the public hearing. Um, the public hearing, I mean, we, I, I believe according to timing, Carolyn, that date you're talking about, what was it the well, first? Well, I think, yes, I was thinking that could be additional time for you to discuss this because I believe you want to set the public hearing for September 13th. Right, so that's the-, so, the oh, But you need to have more time to discuss um, as do we as the Board of Selectmen. So we are having further discussion on August 25th and then hopefully get some feedback from Lisa on the, by the 30th or on the 30th or 31st so that we would be ready for a, you know, the final dis presentation to you on the first. And, and it sounds like you all need more public discussion to know what's going forward on the public hearing. That's all, I, I, I was suggesting that. Yes, Chris, thank you, Carolyn. Annalee, could I add something? Just, just a moment, please, David. Um, Chris? Uh, okay. You need to have a two week advance notice for a public hearing. Right, so that would mean that- Dates would not really work. 9-1 wouldn't work because it's 13 days and not 14 days. Well, it's 12 really. Yeah, it's 12 really. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, David and then Andrea. Well, the only thing I'd suggest is if you're having a quandary over the, the six or 2100, um, I don't know if there can be some way to build a, um, the ratio of the size of the system to the acreage that it's going to be on. Well, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Hi, Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> Andrea. So I and wanted to ask, yeah, I wanted to ask Chris if there was any information out there about um, other general standards. I mean, he's talked talk to us about the, 60, the 660 generates 10 kilowatts, that the 2100 was from a report from um, local town planners. Is there any other number in between based on data that you, you know, or would we just be making a number up out of our heads? Well, I talked to a number of um, solar providers and I asked the question, you know, what is the largest residential system that you typically see? And the answer to that question was uh, 15 kilowatts. Um, so again, that would require DPU approval to do that size. That, that equates to um, roughly 874 square feet. The problem with that is that that is a matter of opinion, whereas the other numbers that I provided to you were based on either existing standards or an existing set of recommendations from this report that we're referencing. So if you picked a number in the middle, it would be a bit more arbitrary. Um, not to say you can't do that, um, but that's the so, so I'm wondering what more discussion would provide us, you know? Yeah, I, that yeah my, my thoughts, the only other thing that um, continuing the discussion would be is whether or not more people from the public would be giving their opinions because basically right now we've had very little public comment and uh, you know and it's maybe more than we often have but um, that would probably be the oh, in my mind the major reason for deferring tonight um, I had said David Wolfram and then Kathy Sylvester David, if you still have a question or a comment. No, no, I just okay. wanted to uh, comment about the ratio of the size of the system to the acreage that it's oh, going okay. to be on. Sorry, thank you. Um, Kathy? I just wanted to ask Chris, what, uh, what group was that that said 2100? I'm sorry, I don't really understand. Um, that was a report done by Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, but they had um, they created a task force that was um, included some solar experts and about seven or eight city and town planners from the Pioneer Valley region okay. were on that task force. 
Um, I think at one point I forwarded a copy of the report to the board, but I can do that again if you wanted to look at the, the entire report. That would be great. I, I, I guess I would just go with staying with that number until we get public comment. We, we can change it after that. Am I correct? Or we're not. Oh. Correct? Well, actually, that is a, I mean, that's a point, Kathy. We will be, ha if we move something forward tonight, town council reviews it, and we would have public comment, a public hearing, hearing. on uh, the, on the 13th. And if there is a if we make a change, we can still, as we close the public hearing, we can, um, we could vote for a different number. I believe that that still could be uh, then put on the warrant in time and should be okay. Uh, I would feel more comfortable going with a number that comes from um, a commission of planners than just yeah. picking a number out of a hat. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I have to excuse myself for a few minutes. I did tell you I was on call tonight and this meeting came up after I took that uh, commitment. So I'm going to sign off for a minute. I'll be okay. Um, Jennifer, can you confirm that um, if we were to go forward with a number tonight and then we have public hearing on the 13th and if perchance we decided after the public hearing to change that number, it still could then go forward to the town warrant with a changed number. I don't think so. Um, Chris, did you want to say yeah, the, that, that if the, there's a substantive change, right? The general well, rule of thumb about public hearings on zoning bylaws is that you can make changes to the bylaw after the public hearing provided that the change does not make the bylaw substantially more restrictive than what was originally proposed. If it is more restrictive, then you have to re-advertise and hold another public hearing. Ah, uh, so going and go, in fact, going from a larger to a smaller size is more restrictive. Correct. Hmm. I think Jeff wants to say something. I'm going to unmute you, Jeff. Sure, go for it, Jeff. Okay, go for it. Thank you. I appreciate. Thank you very much. I I appreciate that. You know, I I understand uh, what people are saying and everything, but once again, I'd just like to go back to that 660 square feet. That is not uh, uh, limiting people to do larger uh, ground mounts. They can do that by simply going through a site plan review so i you know i don't understand why you have to put or set a 2100 square foot number on that when you can set a 660 square foot where it will protect those tight neighborhoods and neighbors and yet at the same time with people with more acreage or larger house lots or whatever the case may be, can go for a site plan review and still do a larger ground mount. I, mm -hmm. I you know, at the 2,100 square feet, it does not give homeowners in tight neighborhoods much protection. That 2,100 20, square foot ground mount, as I said before, if you take a look at that, you're talking 10 feet high and 200 you know, feet long or any combination thereof. That's huge. And as Tim pointed out, uh, 660, that gives you a 20 by 33 square foot area, which is very uh, sufficient for tight neighborhoods and not impact your neighbors. Remember, you still have the option of doing roof mounts also if your property, uh, you know, if your roofs allow that. So other than that, you know, people can do uh, site plan reviews, request a site plan review to go larger. All right. Thank so you, Craig. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Well, I'll just leave um, it at that. Uh, Carolyn, it sounds like 9-1 isn't going to work for your issue also. 
Um, so I don't know where we are with that one. Well, but, it looks like we're going to have to do something on Monday then. I Again, next Monday. We have hands up. <laughs> I think I'm sorry. We have Kathy, hands up. Uh, Kathy Petrova and then Jen. I just have a question. Could could this be done on a spectrum? So a base to a maximum? Could it be written in that regard? And then if it exceeds the maximum, then you have a special permit, site plan review? I think that's the way it is now, isn't it, Chris? I mean, it's uh, the- So base the to a cap? The cap yeah. for small scale is a, is at this point in our draft 660. Right. And then it goes. But could we increase yeah, that? Could we increase that? Five five cap. Oh, that's the question. What's the number? Yeah, it is a maximum cap. Jennifer? I think what Jeff Upton was saying that you can do it. It just it's a medium then, a medium scale, and then there's the large scale. You know, it, it's I don't. They just it's just they would just need to go to site plan review after six sixty. It right. You know, and site plan review is as we've mentioned before somewhat cumbersome, and part of what we're trying to do is make. They could also have the roof mounted and the ground mounted without any process, if they wanted to have a larger one, you know, yes, they have, a, I mean, you, you just make yeah, sure. If it, if it works for their property. Right. Um, so planning board, we have a couple more have, comments. Yeah, we have two more hands. Community, right. So maybe we have a couple more comments from community. And then um, I think it's a really a question whether or not we just wanna go forward tonight, pick a number, Take a vote on it, and if and if yet again that number is um, um, pulled down, then we will potentially have to. Um, I would say that that we need to have more discussion. It may mean that we're not able to bring it forward to the town meeting unless we're able to have a meeting um, next Monday. So, uh, Lily, and think then that it has to go into the. Um paper Friday. I'm not sure I understand. Oops, sorry. I, I don't know who said that, but said, Jen, it goes in the no. paper Friday for public hearing on- For, for oh. the 13th. I, I asked Sue today. So she said that she would need to put it into the paper on Friday in order for it to be the two weeks to make this the ninth, uh, the thir nine thirteen hearing date. So, yeah, I just double checked with her. Thank you. All right, uh, Lily and then Tim. Hi, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I just I like Mr. Wolfram's proposal. It takes a little bit of math, but the point I want to make is an acre is forty thousand square feet. 2,000 square feet is like 0 0.05 of an acre. So it, these are s sound big and stuff, but I think that the concept of a ratio to the free space, not, you know, not the building lot, but to the free space would address, now it's a little more complicated and it has to be figured out, obviously, but it would have the ability to both address the aesthetics um, and also address people with smaller land sizes as well as people with larger land sizes and still be bounded by the definition of a medium. That's just my thought. Thank you, Lily. Tim? Um, two things. From a practical standpoint, if, if you want to meet the deadlines for posting this and having it be brought up at special town meeting, then one possible solution would be to put to stay with a 660 feet and then if you hold your public hearing and there's a large outcry in the public 
that says we want to make it larger, then you're not making it less restrictive and it would be allowable. The other thing is to remember that this is for a buy right consideration only. This is to set a low a limit on what you can do buy right without coming to you or the conservation commission or whomever, whatever authority it is, is going to say yes or no. It's not saying that somebody can't build a larger one. It's merely saying that Joe Smith can build a 660 square foot ground mount on his land and he doesn't have to come to the planning board. Now, you could argue that anything larger than that, well, if somebody wants to build a 700, then for 40 extra feet, they're gonna to have to go through all this expense. But that's what buy rights are. They're to set us a, a, a sort of a, sensible limit whereby if somebody did it, it wouldn't be onerous for anyone. Thank you, Tim. <clears throat> All right, um, planning board. Um, there is then the question, uh, Denise. No, I, I, I agree with Tim. I also agree with Jeff. I mean, and I see Rachel nodding her head the whole time. The 660 by right, and then, you know, they just come and get a site plan review. And realistically, you know, I'm just thinking, how many people are really going to do that? I don't know. I don't know. I think, I think if you can put it on your roof, people want to put it on their roof. The only reason they're putting it there is because they can't get enough on their roof. So, or they're, wow. that's all. So I'd, right. I'd stick with the 660. Rachel? I, I, or the sun is not working with their roof. Right. I mean, that's another right. option, as right. you well know, Denise. <laughs> but I think that um, I also, so technology is changing. It's one of the, th the reasons that this, this was out of date almost immediately because we did it initially early on. We were looking at kilowatts and that shifted immediately because technology improved. So I, you know, I don't know that technology is improving as exponentially as it was 20 years ago when we were first talking about this or 10 years ago when I was first talking about this. Um, I think the other thing is that as we become more comfortable and I will just say that I think with a neighbor throwing up, putting up, let me use more gentle language, is that, you know, erecting a solar panel in their backyard, a solar event in their backyard, is gonna take us some time as a community and as a, as a to, to look at and see it in a, in a way that is, I, I just think, like to see it in a, with the right eyes. And I think that as we move forward, we're going to maybe wanna to say to those people who did 660, hey, now we're going to raise the number because people in town see the benefit of this and are moving into it. I, I drove around town to see what, what installations, the visible installations aren't actually very often, but the few that are, if I were the next door neighbor, I would be, huh, you know, it does impact a next door neighbor um, in a way that I think is not insignificant. And I think until we have our eyes kind of tuned to it, I think we want to be gentle with our with what we are allowing by right by right um uh, so that that's where i stand on this well and again as was mentioned um if we were to go back to the 660 and then decide to move it let's say to the 2100 that's less restrictive and would not then be a problem for the town meeting warrant. All right. <clears throat> so, um, may I have a motion? <laughs> I feel like I just got here, but I will move to uh, end the discussion. Thank, yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that this really, since it's not, do we need to have a vote? Have a vote on ending the discussion? I don't think so. Yeah, so it would really be a vote. To, what what mo motion are you looking for? The motion would be to approve the um, the draft bylaws of August nineteenth, including the um, the introductory statement that it will replace in its entirety. I believe it was section th thirty eight hundred. Um, so these new bylaws would replace the others in their entirety. 
that's the motion, Anne Mary. <laughs> so we're repeating, we're having the exact same vote that we just voted on a few minutes ago? I believe so. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, sounds like I it. I believe so. Sounds like it. That's what Rachel moved. And do we have a second? I second that, Denise. <laughs> okay. And this time, well, let's see. Thing, it's so funny how these pictures move around. Um, I'm, uh, let's see, Kathy Watroba. Unmuting, maybe? Kathy Watroba, are you there? Uh, I am. Uh, Kathy Watroba, I, can you hear me? Yes, now we did. Yes, Kathy Sylvester. Hello? Yes, we got you, Kathy. Thank you. We got you as an I. Uh, Kathy Sylvester? I, I guess with the fact that we can change the number to be less restrictive next meeting, I can vote I for tonight. Thank you. Uh, Anne Mary? Anne Mary Cloutier, no. Um, Rachel? Rachel Blaine, I. Uh, Andrea. Oh, thank you, Denise. And Andrea? Andrea Leibson, aye. And Annalie Wolfkohl, aye. So the motion passes. Thank you for a challenging discussion, but we, as was mentioned earlier, it's important. Thank you all very much. Um, so again, hopping around the agenda, as I mentioned, although we don't seem to be hopping too much. Um, the select board, um, you were going to have two conversations for us, but now you only have one, I believe. You Does the select board want to convene, please? Oh. Making motion to open a select board meeting of the town of Deerfield at 8.17 p.m. I can't believe I'm saying that. <laughs> yep. Carolyn Ness here. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. Other than the time. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Aye. Dave Wolfram. Select board meeting is open. We have the frontage for municipal facilities, the access for frontage. Um, that's prepared. Um, do you all have that? We just received it, um, you know, several hours ago, Carolyn. So um, I think it probably would behoove us if you could do a review. Okay, this, this article is so the town can do, well, we have three projects in mind. We have um, the Leary lot, which we have potential to have a 50 foot access out onto Main um, Elm Street so that you could pull off North Main, drive through and go out Main, uh, Elm Street. And that is, uh, would make the parking lot uh, more useful and, and safer rather than have two way traffic. So that's the first project. The second project is um, the park. We could do a subdivision road, but the subdivision road um, is overbuilt for what the park would be requiring and would cost a lot of money. So we're hoping to have the 50 foot access requirements so that we don't have to um, build the subdivision road. Certainly this has all come before you as on the site plan, but the idea is to have a less intrusive road. And, and then we have property on Brayburn Avenue, uh, off Brayburn Avenue, two lots. And we'd like to have, again, an access off North, North Main Street because Brayburn Avenue is um, just so um, undersized and not uh, accessible for you know, emergency vehicles and stuff like that, and a lot of traffic. So um, Carolyn, for, certainly for my benefit and potentially for other newer or members of the planning board, um, the broad municipal frontage changes were voted down in June. These changes are for three specific lots. Or projects. 
I will. Projects, two, yes. three specific projects. projects. And how does that then just play out in, I mean, you're coming to the planning board because it's a zoning issue, but how, do, how does that end up on our zoning bylaws? How, what does it look like? What are we proposing? Well, it gives us a municipal use um, exemption and um, okay, that's all. Then it would be just for these three projects. Yes, we would okay. spot them. No, that it's absolutely not. That's not accurate. So it, it is a um, article for frontage for any municipal facility, uh, but we would always, uh, as we said before, we would always be coming to the uh, planning board for a site plan review. Um, we have these three projects in mind because we're trying to tackle several items, but it would be adding a footnote, uh, subscript nine, I think, um, to the um, uh, principal use table. Um, Jen, you've got a comment. Is that what I'm saying? You look like you had your hands up to kind of say that, right? Yeah, yeah. I was just, I was going to say that. I also um, was talking to the building commissioner and um, town administrator today, and we were even, you know, thinking about other properties, like let's say we wanted to put senior housing in the baseball field behind um, town hall. There is actually land on the side of um, town hall that could be a road access to, to, to get back there if we had this 50 foot um, frontage exemption for municipal projects. So it's just sort of thinking outside of the box and going into the future and just saying that, that it gives us um, a little, um, leeway to use property that we could change um you know the, the workings of and in the, in the center have, village in the center village district yes, i think yes. what i think what people what voted down was that it was you know a town-wide municipal mm -hmm. exemption and this is really for um you know a constrained area in the center village mm -hmm. district that we have so that's the difference. Yeah, yes. and you I see this know. in any big city or any you know large town where you've got really tight areas. You need to have access, and and this uses property and, and allows uh, you know for municipal use to benefit all residents of the town. So um, it's not looking for a blanket. Hey, we're going to put anything anywhere we want. We're always going to come before many boards, including the planning board, an elected board, and do a site plan review. But we see these different projects very getting very. Um, very constrained. You know, when, when we had this idea about the Leary lot, I think it was the day after town meeting, we learned Hampshire Lumber sold. And when it sells the lot that's right next door and the other lot that the building is in get combined um, automatically. So you're only left with like 50 feet exactly to be able to get a spot, you know, to get that road in. So there are a lot of areas in town where we need this this ability, um, and I don't know any other, if somebody could tell me another way to get this to happen, I, I'd love to do it, but um, this seems like the most, the least intrusive and, you know, most oversight to get these projects through uh, so that we can better improve our town, improve I mean, economic development and parking and, and all. Sounds to me like it is being responsive to comments that were made at the June town meeting yes. of having it being yes. more focused in yep. the center village area. Yeah. So it's well, not I, I spot zoning. It, is, it is not spot zoning because it's 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 identifying a, a district. So it's not for the various, but it's for the whole district, which makes it much right. more significantly has more integrity that way. Mm, thank you. Mm. Yeah. And you know Denise? Oh Trevor, I'm sorry, Denise had, and then Dave. I just had a yeah, question Andrew. about so you said, you know, to put in a road off of North Main, do, do we already have that property or that easement we or that's just yes. in the future if someone, okay, if someone yes, sells it us, we could it do it. allowed that. us, yeah, if somebody okay. opened up their parcel. Okay. Well, to that's us, what was discussed yeah. before. That's fine. Yeah. Well, over, over 10 years ago, I, I think, Denise, you remember Berkshire Brew was going through some kind of, ex, you know, thinking of expanding. Right. And we were going to trade a sliver of to Leader Lumber for the access to do something in that parking lot area for Berkshire Brew. Now that we have Treehouse you know, here, the synergy of you know, trying to attract people downtown is a real opportunity and we don't want to miss that opportunity. Yeah. So that's why we're pushing the, you know, or pursuing the Leary lot. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, David? Thanks. Well, it's just, you know, it's here again, you know, you came up with a whole list of town-owned properties for us a while ago, and yes. we identified certain ones that could be advantageous to growth within Deerfield, uh, controlled growth, and things that would be advantageous. And we saw in a number of instances that that frontage was going to be a possible issue for us. And that's why we kind of focused on what we're doing right now. Um, you know, the Hampshire Lumber, uh, they want to trade the 50 feet for another parcel that the town owns that would technically probably wouldn't be usable for us other than parking space. So it makes a lot of sense to make that loop in there and make that a lot more user friendly and make it more aesthetic with things. Uh, I think uh, Trevor has talked with uh, a couple people like Berkshire Design, what we could do there to really make that pop to help start bringing that center of town out to what we want. Thank you, David. And I mean, I think just for the planning board's edification, we are, um, my battery is running low. Um, we are um, having discussion now. And at the end of this discussion, this is uh, something that planning or the select board is bringing to us. And um, the planning board then would vote for a public hearing on September 13th. Yes. Okay. So is there, um, and then there'd be public hearing on September 13th and moves forward from there. Yes. Is there any more discussion then among the planning board on what this might be? Um, doesn't appear to be. Um, then uh, I guess I, it would be a motion to bring um, bring forward the. I, I know. So we need to bring forward. We um, I move that we bring the this proposal, which I quite frankly have not even seen yet. So thank you so much for the good explanation. But it does make a ton of sense. Forward to uh, a public hearing um, in preparation for a town meeting, a special town meeting. Um, so on September 13th. So I move that. We move this forward as the planning board. Thank you. Um, second? I second it, Kathy Sylvester. Um, any more discussion? <clears throat> oh, okay. So um, all those in, let's see, in favor, um, Looking along here again, Kathy Petroba. Aye, Kathy Petroba. Thank you. Anne Mary. Anne Mary Cloutier, aye. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, aye. Rachel Blaine. Rachel Blaine, aye. And Andrea. Andrea Leibson, aye. And Lee will call aye. So we will bring forward Denise, this. Denise Mason. Oh, and Denise Mason. I'm sorry, Denise. Right. <laughs> I'm sorry, Denise. She's Unanimous. so hello there. She's... <laughs> um, so we will bring this forward to um, a public hearing on um, the 13th of September. Right? And then. Um, Select board, you don't have the other piece that you wanted to bring forward to us tonight. We're, we're still working on our tourist overlay district, tourism overlay district. I think um, we obviously can't, you know, her hadn't had outside discussion on this, but um, I think there is consensus from prior discussion that we would are looking at the area from the animal um, the veterinary clinic down to um, the fire station and 116 on one side of five and 10. And the other is the Channing Beat property down to the EMS building. And also the Yankee Candle um, properties at the far end of town, south end of town. That would be the overlay district. Um, Trevor and Dave, is that is that what you had in mind? 
Uh, that is what I had in mind. Yes. Yes, I um, I just wanted to look at the maps a little bit more and and just fully understand exactly where that's going right. to be. Um, but I know I understand. But in general, that's what we were thinking. Okay. Absolutely. Yep. And then what we were trying to do was come up with some basic things that were by, as by right, and then um, what had to be special permit. And um, we, we need more work because we hadn't 100% um, agreed on like hotels um, versus campgrounds and um, a separate, you know, special use maybe would be under um, entertainment license versus, you know, uh, zoning license. So uh, we just are, have run out of time, basically. We're gonna work on this on Wednesday, this Wednesday. Um, I don't know if anyone can join us so that you might have a quorum to move this forward to be published in the paper. I don't know. Carolyn, did you wanna share this screen with the picture of the overlay or? Do we have, do we have the overlay that we just talked about? Well, or is it just still too preliminary? I think it's pretty preliminary. It is. Okay. Um, I do see a hand raised, Lily. Hi, yeah, I have a question um, in trying to understand what you're talking about. If I recall correctly, wasn't there a group seeking to build a, uh, a grow facility or a lab back behind Brent's um, Mill River Farm back, and I think it's within the, the area you're talking about, isn't it? So how would that affect that? I mean, is it's a, a it's a great tourist draw, I guess, but I, mean, right. I don't know what. Does they could do the grow facility, or they could do the. This gives them the right to do whatever is permitted by right in the tourist overlay district. They could do both. I think they still plan to move forward with the marijuana, you know, uh, testing facility, a lab, and uh, a grow facility back there. Okay, and it would be fine within your plan because I don't know what you mean by a tourist overlay. So um, you can have multiple overlay. This is actually overlaid over our red light district. So you can have multiple overlays. <laughs> Times have changed. As you noted at, at town meeting, Lily, that horn is online now. If, yeah. you know, <laughs> Nobody wants it anyway. <laughs> okay, but, thank you. I was just curious because I knew that that was. Because that would be a significant employer. They were talking about a lot of employees, so um, I didn't know if it would impact. Thank you, um, Andrea. Yeah, gonna, you know, I was just wondering if it includes any of the downtown South Deerfield, so uh, the you know the hotel, et cetera. Would that area be included? Um, we we had talked about that, but I think um, this was more for. Um, um, the brewing, a craft, craft mm -hmm. a brewing establishment kind of. And we, events that would take place around that. Yeah. And arts, yeah. Art, um, art activities, art, art based uses and events, including, but not limited to art museums, art shows, art, um, artesian st studios, art galleries, including exhibits and sale and theaters. The idea is to, there are certain activities to include in the tourist overlay. And so we're just trying to figure out what comes under our entertainment um, license and what comes under zoning. And so that's what we're trying to figure out. Well, it sounds like the real, the question before the planning board right now is whether or not um, informally or actually trying to gather a quorum to be able to be part of your um, meeting this Wednesday. It still sounds like it might still be quite ambitious to get this on town yeah. meeting. And if we can't, we can't. Um, I don't know. I don't know if anyone would like to participate. Well, I think certainly participating and understanding the the issues are good you know whether or not we would be at a point of being able to um uh, actually have a meaningful conversation considering 
what we just went through. Um, I don't know. Did, yeah, and Mary? What are the time constraints, Carolyn? Well, just, we, have to, we have to post this 14 days, right? Oh, but I mean, in terms of development or in terms of decision making beyond what, 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 are, what are you up against in terms of if it doesn't make that time? Well, they just have to wait till spring town meeting. And Mary? Um, I just wanted to point out that you, you and I might have a FERCOG um, conflict on Wednesday because mm -hmm. I actually would be interested in being at your meeting otherwise. Well, um, Annalie, does it make sense to find out who could be at the meeting on Wednesday? I know I could. Okay, Denise, you're able to, Kathy, yeah. the Kathy's? I can. I can. Yeah. I can. yeah. Okay. I think I can. If, yeah. Okay, then Annalie, if we, oh, sorry. Second. Pardon me, Jennifer. Today is, we don't have time to post for you to have a meeting. Oh, okay. you can continue this. You can continue this meeting. Hmm. Oh, so we wouldn't adjourn this meeting. Right. Okay. You would continue the discussion and work on the bylaws in our oh. meeting. We, we, the select board can adjourn because we have a posted meeting, which the zoning is on our agenda, I believe. Is that true? Where's Casey? She's saying no. She's saying you, you can't per council. Yeah, Carolyn, you do have to post within 48 hours. You can't just continue a meeting. Well, there you she have corrected it. me when I moved back to town. <laughs> no, actually, it, council corrected me. Hmm. All right. All right. I guess I'm really. All right. Well, well who's your meeting can... Thursday? Um, I can. We could. We could do a little bit Thursday if, if Dave and Trevor are available. We need a quorum. Okay. You mean this so, 26th? You, you're talking this Thursday? Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Um, I could, if it's, you know, in the evening. Yeah. I'm not available until 7.30 on Thursday. Probably well, me, me well. either. Okay. So 7.30 then? Um, who, Denise, are you available Thursday? I am, and another question, if, if, if we can have a quorum and we can meet on Thursday, if you could please send all of us the overlay map in advance so that we would have a better understanding and any other narrative yeah. that goes along with it would be helpful. Sure. Um, Andrew, Andrea, are you available Thursday? No. Um, I am. Uh, Rachel, you are Kathy Sylvester Thursday? Uh, at 7 30 is that the time that would be for me also yeah probably could do that yeah i have another meeting earlier than that so and mary once again there's a fur cog but by 7 30 we would be done hopefully <laughs> yeah <clears throat> all right um well let's then um continue this discussion to Third, pardon me, Rachel. No, I no, I, I, it. I, we could post Continue it. the discussion on this uh, to this no, I think Thursday. You, I think you'd me? post the meeting, right? Is that is that yeah, right, Jennifer? You post, you post a new meeting, you'll have enough time so you can post it and get it on the agenda. We're good. And it'll just be the tourist, tourism overlay district. Okay. And we, we will try to get something to you as soon as we can um, uh, after we've reviewed we we have two versions that we have to align and, and you're going to duke it out on wednesday night so that it's beautiful on thursday hey casey mm -hmm. <laughs> yep that's the plan you know us too well rachel <laughs> yep. I, i'm taking tickets for that one <laughs> Come on. <laughs> yes jennifer i just want to make sure casey is available because conservation commission has a meeting that evening and so Alex can't run it because they're talking about treehouse and he's involved with CBA. So yeah. 
Are you available, Casey? To I think so. Yeah, I'm available. Okay. Well, we'll try to get everything out. We'll try to be as concise as possible so that you can review it and then Casey can get it in the newspaper on Friday. Because whatever, just as we stated before, we can make it more restrictive. I mean, you know, we can vote something and be restrictive as much as possible with the idea that if there is some discussion or concern, we can loosen it up a bit and as long as it's not substantial. So um, it just can't be more restrictive. So um, we'll have to try to keep that in mind when we're doing the discussion. Thank you, Carolyn. Um, Lily, and then maybe we'll, oh, Lily and Tim, and then maybe we'll move on. I just quickly wanted to offer if, if you guys need it, I have a professional Zoom account and I'm happy to host if Casey um, can't, okay? Just put that out Thank there, just you, let me know, okay? Thank you, Lily. Tim? Um, I just wanted to ask a question um, about Alex's ability to just be the, the technical support person or turn it over to me and let me run it. Um, the only thing we're doing that involves tree houses, we're just correcting that we needed to have a negative determination two on something we've already approved. Mm -hmm. it's, it's really just a technical change. We're not going to have any discussion other than to say we need to change the box we ticked off. We're just being safe. <laughs> and, and as I say, I've run meetings before, so I'm perfectly willing to do it if it's a question of bandwidth for other people. Okay, maybe you can discuss you. that offline. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for that. All right. So the bottom line with that is 7.30, that we're, the, a meeting that it will be posted that the planning board will be having a combined meeting with the select board on 8.26 at 7, beginning at 7.30, correct? <clears throat> okay, so we're just like having such good things here to discuss. Let's go to the Lascotti Dollar General um, final actions. <clears throat> I did forward to the planning board the um, br brief or somewhat actually dense um, statements from Adam <clears throat> Costa, town council. Um, as we know, uh, Dollar General, Lascotti, and company have um, withdrawn their applications um, for um, building in Deerfield on that site. Um, this is the stormwater application as well as a site plan review. And um, there has they have made a request, which Adam has felt is a very reasonable request with really no downside for the town that the application be withdrawn without prejudice. Um, so maybe planning board, we could have some discussion and then there um, would be a motion um, to <clears throat> that effect if that's the case. And Mary? <clears throat> um, do they not still owe us money for a third party review? No. They will not pay that, Anne Mary. Okay, just checking. <laughs> it's still a contract the town signed, however. Right. Yeah, we're, we're still, still on for it, right? I tried. Yes. <laughs> I'm certain you did. Is there other discussion? Okay. This is the easiest discussion we've had about. Well, yeah, no. Oh, uh, Natalie, Denise? No. Okay, so without prejudice, I mean, that means, okay, and I think Adam said without prejudice, or if there was that, they could still come back two years, is it two years later? But the fact of the matter is, is that we have the, um, God, no, I can't. Formula -based. excuse me? Yes, the formula-based bylaw. So therefore they could only, if they came back, only in the C2 district, which is far north, Okay, which is very close to Greenfield that already has two. So the likelihood is probably slim to none, if that's my interpretation. Oh, wow. <clears throat> Up to them, but yes. Okay. And Mary, thank you, Denise. That's a good point. I guess that was more of my point. Like I know the town's never gonna get their money from him, from them, 
but without prejudice, I mean, they do kind of owe us this money. So I don't, I don't know if that makes any difference, but were they to reapply, I don't know. I guess in my mind, it's not without prejudice since there was this sort of kerfuffle, but maybe I have it wrong. Um, thank you, Anne-Marie. Yeah, I mean, as I understand it too, there was a little bit of a misstep on our side as well in terms of going forward and doing the engagement without getting there. Well, there's um, also an ethical responsibility to pay your bills too of the $6,000, but that's just me. <laughs> you got it. Um, Lily? Um, so I, as a member of the public, and as I've made my opinion very clear on this, <laughs> it's a lot aligned with the members who have spoken, um, I, if they want it without prejudice, then they should pay their bill. Otherwise, I think it should be with prejudice. They sued the town. They sued the town when they got what they wanted. They sued the town when they didn't get what they wanted. I firmly believe that we should be paid for what our bylaws require that they do it. And I understand, Casey, they say they're not going to pay it. But therefore, you don't pay the bill, then you this is with prejudice. That's what I would but, strongly urge. I'm not sure what with prejudice Lee, Lee, means. Let me just break it down in plain language. We should have gotten the money before we signed the contract. That did not happen. But I don't. But Casey, they're not what I'm saying pay. is, I, I, what I'm saying is, they knew that they were supposed to pay that bill. They know that as a business, they it's were not informed up to of it. It's up to us to get the money first. But Casey, my point is, they are not acting in good faith. They have never acted in good faith with us, and I don't believe they have earned the privilege of being dismissed without prejudice. I, I don't clearly know feel strongly, but that's that's, that's a legal at, Casey. Well, if. But, so, but I'm telling, I am speaking why I believe it should not be done without prejudice. That's my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lily. Casey, do you want to add anything? Um, this is Dave. I understand I'd like to just, just a moment, Dave. About this. Case. <clears throat> I understand everybody's emotion about this, but the town has a responsibility to get the money up front before a contract is signed. That didn't happen. So the contract is not between the applicant and the peer reviewer. It's between the town and the peer reviewer. And so we dropped the ball on that. And when we asked them, they chose not to pay the bill. So I understand the emotion, but functionally that's how it should have happened. And it didn't. So we're stuck with the bill. And if we don't pay it, conceivably time bond could take us to court. I don't know that they will, but it is an outstanding payment that the town hasn't made right. I, I get that it has to do with that, but it's it's a contract that the town signed. Mm, David, do you but still the the other part of it, and you know, obviously I'm not a lawyer, but the uh, from my understanding of it, when they withdraw without prejudice, that means they're agreeing to drop their lawsuit as well that they have filed. So um, so which would cost us a lot more than the bill that Titan Bond has. Thank you, David. <clears throat> Trevor? So, yeah, my questions were, um, I, I didn't see Adam's recommendation or anything like that, but I was wondering what our, our attorneys recommended that we accept this, and, and, and I assume that was negotiated. So what I was wondering was, what are the consequences if we don't? I assume the lawsuits could still go forward, you know, I just feel like we'd be dragging this thing out longer than we need to um, and spending more money than we have to. But um, I know there's a principle here and there's an emotion to this. And I, I agree with all of it. Um, I don't, you know, so I'm just curious, what, you know, what, what are the impacts if we if we don't do this? Well, um, Adam's statements were that, um, I mean, it was somewhat dense I could reread it uh, he, no, but... he 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 basically stated that <clears throat> <clears throat> oh 
a withdrawal without prejudice, even on a remand, and this is yeah. <laughs> requires planning board permission. Um, he said it might be stated that that is the case. He says, I'm not sure that's accurate. Um, the general laws allow for a withdrawal by a petitioner without prejudice only, quote, prior to the publication of notice of a public hearing on its application and provides that thereafter the application may be withdrawn without prejudice only with the approval of the board. Mm -hmm. So he, I don't think he really addresses, you know, he, he says, I mean, basically he says, I think it's wise for the planning board to vote to accept and authorize the proponents withdrawal without prejudice. It does no harm to the town. Okay. I suspect, but do not know that the board, board was poised to deny the site pound approval anyway, um, and will welcome the withdrawal. While the withdrawal without prejudice would permit reapplication at any time, that is probably even true of a withdrawal with prejudice. Indeed, if the application was for a variance or special permit, reapplication could be made within two years, so long as the next application incorporates specific and material changes to the proposal. In short, I recommend that we accept the request on behalf of Donahue. Okay. So he, it basically In other words, they can reapply either way, right. with or without prejudice. So um, it doesn't really impact uh, their, um, their opportunity to make another bid. Um, and potentially, no, excuse me, Rachel. Oh, go ahead. Oh, potentially might influence the issue of the pending lawsuit. The right. litigation. If we litigation. Get rid of the litigation, that'd be great. Other, any other discussion? I, I'm, I'm in favor of withdrawing without, without um, prejudice. I, you know, I, I do, I felt bruised and battered over and over again um, on many, many fronts over the years um, that there's a sense in which that is what they do and that's, that's how they proceed. And um, they were doing their due. And as Casey said, that they'll pay their bills as long as they had the bill, but we didn't, you know, that didn't work the way that we wished that we had done it. And there were other missteps, you know, we, we learned a lot. That was a fast track lesson um, and, and engaged a lot of people in figuring out what it was that we wanted in the town and what, um, what that corridor means to our town, the five and 10 corridor. Um, and I'd love to let go of any litigation to be fully honest. I think that see the end side of that would be really great. So I would be in favor of um, accepting it without prejudice. Thank you, Rachel. So the discussion among the planning board. <clears throat> okay, so um, the motion then potentially could be and then we will have an opportunity after the second for um, discussion is that <clears throat> the motion would be to accept and authorize the applicants request to redraw, withdraw the applications without prejudice. So could I have that motion? I move that we um, do that. <laughs> I <laughs> so I do your that. <laughs> Thank you, Rachel. Is there a further discussion? Okay, let's go the other direction around. Denise? Yes, well, happy for it to end. <laughs> Andrea? Andrea Liebson, yes. Um, uh, Rachel? Rachel Blaine, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Mary Cloutier. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Kathy Wittroba. Kathy Wittroba, yes. Annalie Wolf Cool, yes. Goodbye, Lascotti and Dollar General. There we go. Um, it's uh, last, our last meeting was quite late. I, would like not to have that be the case, but we do need to decide what our meeting format would be um, for the 913 meeting. Um, before we really have that discussion, Jen, um, it appeared, 
a week or so ago that we figured a workaround while awaiting the new equipment so that we could have a hybrid and Zoom is able to, Zoom people are able to hear. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So we still then, but that's, that's good because otherwise in my mind, hybrid wasn't even possible because people couldn't hear. <laughs> so the question then, do we want um, for 913 hybrid, remote, or in person only? So do we have the new equipment? I didn't get that. Uh, I, I figured out a, a roundabout way of using our speaker module things and then putting the gooseneck speakers on and <laughs> Anyway, I figured it out and then muting the zoom and lowering the volume on the television to 10. So anyway, and it seems to be working. Yeah, it is. It's right, working. Is select board on Wednesday. Is that on? Is that um, in person with hybrid opportunity? Yes. Hybrid. It's hybrid on Wednesday. Good to know. All right. So um, 913. Um, <clears throat> I'll I don't think this needs to be a vote, but um, I, I think hybrid makes sense on 913. Is that acceptable to the planning board? Looks like we're getting a, a high thumbs up. Denise, you have a question? Yeah, no, I, I think that's fine. I think, you know, there has been an uptick in COVID, unfortunately, and I just saw that today, Trevor. Six new cases in Deerfield and 10 who have had um, so I'm fine with doing that, but I think that we have to decide this on a month to month basis because, yeah. And then the question is, if we're doing this a hybrid in person, will we have to wear masks while we're doing it, which is incredibly uncomfortable to try and do a meeting with a mask on. So I think that's a big consideration. But if we publicize it, then we have to do it, which we found out last time. Okay, That's a good uh, so we, can't, we can't switch if it's if we publicize hybrid we've got to do hybrid. Okay. So I'm fine for the 13th. Anna Lee Carolyn has her hand raised. Do tell. Hi, Carolyn. <laughs> um, we have not required mass in the town hall yet. Um, just based on our numbers and the number of the rate of vaccination uh, in, in Deerfield is very high, but that's not to say it's not coming. Um, I would, you know, a lot of towns around us have already mandated masks. So I don't, I, if it is hybrid, if you vote for hybrid, there is a possibility by the 13th that we might as a, as a um, select board, I mean, as board of health have, you know, gotten to the point where we have no choice on the mass mandate. But at this point, um, you know, we're just watching the cases so okay. and we we encourage people to to wear them if they feel comfortable for sure like we had a meeting tonight here everybody wore a mask just because it felt everyone felt more comfortable here but this hasn't been mandated yet okay. jennifer what about thursday's meeting too if you could make a decision since everybody's here and we know how to post it tomorrow well carolyn you already said thursday was hybrid um, yeah, David, well, sorry. <laughs> yeah, um, our select board meeting on Wednesday is in person, and no, I would assume they doesn't have to be. Yeah, but your your uh, you know the uh, planning board could jo join us by. Could they also okay. join us by remote? Yes, they can all. Or is that too confusing? For people? Gonna, yeah. but you'll be in that, but you'll be there. We'll be here. We'll be uh, here. But Thursday's meeting at seven thirty. Oh. That's right, what right. I'm asking about Thursdays. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. I'm I say sorry. we do it on Zoom. Yeah, remote. Just yeah. Zoom. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's all, oh, Thursday, let's all of us do Zoom. And, yeah. and thank you. <laughs> thank you. And then are we still talking about um, hybrid on um, the 13th? Uh, with a recognition that the 13th is um, yet again another public hearing time. So we want people to be able to participate however mm -hmm. they feel comfortable mm -hmm. <clears throat> i think hybrid on the 13th is good is a good plan ahead. okay i'm saying nodding we be, so, and we can be flexible um and by that time we'll the the the, the gooseneck will be all 
pointed in the right direction and we will all be heard. <laughs> Excellent. Oh, good. All right. Um, what I would like, oh, well, ooh, we have two, I believe, um, probably fairly brief public hearings. Um, one is on um, the terminology change of select board to select men um, that we um, <clears throat> weren't able to do in the June public person. meeting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> select um, men to select board. That's yeah. the other way around. Sorry yeah. about that. Um, <laughs> I think I'm supposed to read the official opening of the public hearing for that. Perfect. So, a moment please here. Um, mm. Sorry about that. Okay, so the first one I see here is Bud Plain. So, sorry, that um, notice is given that the Deerfield Planning Board is holding its public hearing pursuant to GL Chapter 40A, Section 5 on tonight, August 23rd at 7 p.m. <clears throat> on proposed amendments to the Deerfield, Town of Deerfield Zoning Bylaws Chapters, Chapter 179, Section 4300, Floodplain District Zoning Bylaw, to see if the town will vote to amend Section 4300 <clears throat> of the Floodplain District Zoning Bylaw by deleting the words currently set currently section 744 from section 4306. That's the public hearing we're doing right now. So are there any members it's of open. the- Pardon me, is it open? It's open. I, it's open, you've just opened it, yay. It's open, it's open. Um, so um, our public hearing, again, as we had, really to a large extent with our previous discussion of um, <clears throat> discussions being one person, uh, two minutes and respectful. So any uh, concerns about uh, any, any comments from the public on this proposal that we would bring forward to town meeting? It's a minor, it's a minor shift. Right. That, in fact, the sister, uh, non-generic, uh, proposal was approved at a town meeting, but we were not able to um, put this forward at town meeting just because of a technical glitch. Yep. Okay, I don't see any comments from the public, so... Um, I move that we close the public hearing. Thank you. Second? I second that, Denise Mason. Thank you, all in, uh, so Denise Basin? Yes. Rachel yes. Blaine, yes. Andrea. Uh, Andrea. Andrea Liebson, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Mary? And Mary Cloutier, yes. And Kathy Wittroba? Kathy Wittroba, yes. And Lee Wolfkohl, yes. So the public hearing is closed. Um, could we have a motion to... Um, That's it. Now we just need to open the other. No, but, well, that's the public hearing. Don't we have to move it? I mean, we have to then, then, then it moves over to oh. town more without. Oh, I move that we present this at town, uh, at the special town meeting um, for the public approval. Yeah, make a motion to move forward. Yes, I make a motion that we move this forward to special town meeting for public approval. I second that, Denise Mason. All right, uh, Kathy Wittroba. Hi, Kathy Wittroba. And Mary? Yes. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Kathy Sylvester? Kathy Sylvester, yes. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, yes. And uh, Andrea Liebson? Andrea Liebson, yes. Denise Mason? Denise Mason, yes. And Lee Wolfpool, yes. Thank you. Um, and so then the other, that was flood, that was floodplain. Wait, that was? Yes, that was floodplain. Now we move to the... Oh. Um, the I, I got select man select board board yes right um and um it, that would be um opening the public can we open well i didn't receive the actual wording so um for the opening the public meeting 
but um, it would be to see if the town will vote to amend the town of Deerfield general zoning bylaws by deleting the word selectman each time it has appeared and inserting the term select board in place thereof and further deleting the words board of selectmen each time it appears and do it as select board um, and further that the clown turk, clown, <laughs> town clerk be authorized to make clerical editorial and other adjustments to effectuate for purposes thereof. I, mean, I think there's a question and Dave, you can potentially address it, whether select board um, is two words or one word, because in this uh, proposed article from last town meeting, it's two words and capitalized, both words are capitalized. Is that the way it goes or? That's a good point. I, it should be, I, believe, I saw that error or I saw that mistake and, and I mentioned it to Casey. So it's one word with select board capitalized. Only uh, with the S. Only the S. Yes. And that is, believe that, is, throughout. I believe that is consistent with the one that was passed at town meeting. Excellent. Yes. Good, good, good. Okay. So with our open public hearing, are, is there any comment from, um, is there, are there any comments? All righty then, if I could have- I move to move this forward. Move we, we, no, I move that we close the public hearing. Oh, thank you. Okay. Discussion? I second Excellent. It. Yeah. Um, uh, and Mary? Oops, sorry. Hey, Mary Cloutier, yes. Uh, Kathy Wotroba. Kathy Wotroba, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Andrea Leibson. Andrea Leibson, yes. Denise Mason. Denise Mason, yes. Annalie Wolfpool, yes. Rachel so Blaine, yes, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Now we're going to move it forward. I move that we we um, put forward this um, amendment at special town meeting to public vote. Put it on the Excellent. I second that, Denise Mason. Denise, yes. uh, any discussion? Any, is there any discussion? No. Denise Mason? Yes. Andrea? Andrea Leibson, yes. Kathy Sylvester? Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Mary Cloutier? And Mary Cloutier, yes. Rachel Blaine? Rachel Blaine, yes. Kathy Retroba? Kathy Retroba, yes. And Lee Wolfcool, yes. So um, we will move this forward then to town meeting. Um, That's so fun. We just like nailed that. <laughs> In 15 minutes on the warrant. Bam. Whoa. <laughs> Let's just try that for some of our other bylaws. All right. I believe that, um, I mean, I had sent out mail for people to look at. And um, otherwise, I believe that our agenda items, um, unless you choose to have another, I think it would really just be 15 minutes, but who am I to say, um, to finish our agenda for today. So what's the consensus? Let's do it. Pardon me? Go. Oh. Go for yeah. it, go for it. Okay, FERCOG, we had talked um, a number of months ago about having FERCOG, FERCOG come to talk with us about potentially two different issues. One is an overview of what FERCOG does, and the other is an overview of the various housing issues, accessory apartments, short-term rentals, housing that is affordable, et cetera. And um, they are available to come on um, November 1st. Um, I'm not sure if that would just be one of those two items or not, but does that sound like it's good to have FERCOG come on November 1st? Yeah. Sure. Okay, good. Um, and then um, Open Space Committee has asked for an appointment and Andrea has volunteered to be appointed to our Open Space Committee, um, which is a good committee because they're dealing with <laughs> stuff that comes to planning board. So um, could I have a motion to- uh, I, move, I move that we appoint Andrea Leibson to the Open Space Committee. I second it, Rachel Blaine. Any discussion? No. Andrea, you're still in, uh, right? Right? <laughs> I think so, uh, yes. Okay, so excellent. Do it, Andrea. All right, <laughs> Kathy Wachroba? 
Kathy? Kathy Uchaba, yes. Rachel yes. Blaine. Rachel Blaine, yes. Uh, and Mary. And Mary Cloutier, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. Andrea. Andrea Leibson, yes. And uh, Denise. Denise Mason, yes. And Emily Wolfkel, yes. So Andrea, congratulations. Thank you. I'm gonna um, work with my old yeah, Deerfield Land Trust buddies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, I did not receive any other business anticipated, not anticipated 40 hours prior. I don't know if there are any other public comments tonight. Or was Chris Curtis contract renewal no. on there? No, actually that was an error. I, um, I misread something about an invoice. So I'm sorry, okay. that was an error. Um, reports, any special, any committees or seminars that people have attended and want to speak too? Well, to, the Wednesday that you guys are talking about, that's the Alyssa LaRosa's for COG that you guys sent around. Is that Wednesday? Yeah. Yes. Yes. And Mary and I are representatives Great. on that. Um, and otherwise, I don't know if anyone has attended any other webinars, seminars, or um, need to give us any committee updates. Uh, Jennifer. I just want to say that Andrea and Kathy Sylvester came for our little tour, <laughs> our big tour of the town hall and meeting people. So we did a loop. Oh, that's great. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you for doing that for us. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. And again, thank you to Jennifer and Denise for um, working on mm -hmm. a right. well, orientation slash upload yeah. that well, was great. Well, right. Jennifer did a lot of the work and sorry I missed that. I was just coming back from being away and I, yeah, sort of okay. spaced that one out. I can show you where the light switch is. <laughs> okay, yes, please. <laughs> um, be helpful. I also um, want to say that we should on. probably set another time when, because I don't think we did that for when we want to meet for another training because um, Annalie, you had sent me a bunch of documents to print for your book and update, so I, I have all of that ready to go. Great. Oh, wow. OK. That's all. But we can talk about Let's, it. Let's, OK, that can maybe be uh, for business next. Uh, to discuss. Uh, so bring your calendars. Um, I sent or forwarded to the mail to you. Since then, we've received two other pieces of mail. Um, one is that uh, just today that the ZBA in Greenfield is having a public hearing on the installation of a solar PV array on Chapman Street and the Whateley ZBA is um, going to be addressing an accessory apartment special permit um, <clears throat> application to replace a marijuana, replace marijuana greenhouses on LaSalle Boulevard. So that's the mail. Um, so our next meetings are, what is it, 826 at 730 remote or Zoom, right? Yeah, well, same thing. Um, 913 hybrid, and that's at 7. And then um, our special town meeting will be on October 4th. Um, David, you're still here. Maybe is David still here? I don't yeah, see. I'm, yes. I'm here. Uh, yeah. So is there going to be anything like those pre town meeting info sessions? Or you haven't decided yet? Oh, um, right now we're planning on having it at the auditorium, the special town meeting you're talking about? Well, no. Remember for the June one, we had a pre town, you had. Before the town meeting, you had in, an in, oh, pre-meeting info yeah. session. Uh, yeah, so I guess you'll let that, us know. We haven't had that discussion yet. Okay, cool. All right. Could I have a motion to adjourn? I move to adjourn. And I second. <laughs> All right. That was quick. <laughs> <laughs> no discussion. I was muted. I was muted. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you, Select Board. For, oh, do you need to return? Oh, yes. yes. We motion need to adjourn the Select Board. They're just I not going to that. Us. Thank you. I second, I second that. Any further Thank discussion? You. No. No. All those in favor? All right. Yay. Hi. Oh, Hi. 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 Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Hi. 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 Hi
All right, Dave Wolfram. Thank, thank you all so you much so for allowing much, us everybody. to join Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, thank you for hanging with us. Thank Great you. Meeting. Bye. We'll see you in about 20 hours. Bye. Thanks to everybody. <laughs> yes. Right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Thanks for joining, Jeff. Bye. Thank you. Bye.